Hello, in this video, we're talking about the Viva Connection Toolkit, which is a new Visual Studio extension built together with the community to improve the productivity of the developers when they're building for Microsoft Viva Connection or Microsoft Viva Home, or in general, for anything around SharePoint Framework. So Microsoft Viva Connection, is the toolkit is really designed to improve the productivity and make it easier for new developers to actually build extensibility for Viva Connection and for Viva Home. So specifically about those ACE components. And ACE components are adaptive card components, which are actually built with adaptive card technologies and SharePoint Framework. So SharePoint Framework is the underlying powering technology uh, around the ACs, this ACE components as well. Now, let's go through a few slides. And then as part of this series, we have quite a few other videos where we are showing the Viva Connection toolkit as a, a more detail. But within this intro video, we're going to focus on positioning. Why does it exist? What does it actually do? And, and what is the future around the Viva Connection, extra, Viva Connection uh, toolkit? So let's jump right into the slides. So first of all, a Viva Connection Toolkit and those ACs for Viva Connection are actually being built using SharePoint Framework. That naming is a bit of a confusing thing because SharePoint Framework is not only for SharePoint. You can actually build extensibility with SharePoint Framework for Microsoft uh, Viva, Microsoft Teams, uh, SharePoint, and nowadays also for Outlook and or Microsoft 365 app or Office um, as well. So really cool technology and the SharePoint Framework name was introduced back in 2016 and it might actually get changed at some point because the scope is not just about the SharePoint. So the naming is certainly misleading, uh, but it is the underlying technology which is powering a lot of the capabilities across Microsoft 365. And SharePoint Framework is really designed for the, those LOB implementation. So really designed and it's an awesome way to build those enterprise solutions within a Microsoft 365. It can be, however, also used by the ISVs. Now, with all due fairness, if you have an existing website which are looking in the surface and for example, in Microsoft Teams, that website being hosted it's like www.contoso.com and, and people are signing in there, you probably want to use Microsoft Teams app model to integrate with the Microsoft Teams rather than SharePoint Framework. But if you're looking into having a native TypeScript uh, and a web stack development experience, SharePoint Framework is actually providing you that. And then you can build the nice, uh, really dynamic experience uh, for the UX side across all of those different applications. So SharePoint Framework, it is by far the easiest way to build your enterprise solutions with Microsoft 365 with automatic single sign-on. So as the users are using the SharePoint Framework components within the UX, they're already signed in. So they have the same, the components has the same permissions as the user. There's no additional pop-ups or sign-ins or any of those processes in place. Everything is automatic. It has automatic hosting, which is a really, really cool thing as well. So as you're deploying a SharePoint Framework solution to a tenant level, the code is automatically hosted in the tenant as well. That provides a security layer because the code is running inside of the tenant. And also the code doesn't have to be explicitly hosted somewhere else if you don't want to. That is an option still. So if you're an ISV or you're a SaaS provider and you want to build SharePoint Framework native experiences, you can still host SharePoint Framework components, JavaScript files and images and all of that in your CDN, which you own. Or alternatively, you can deploy the SharePoint Framework solution directly in the customer tenant. So depending on a customer preference, they might have an opinion, either way of making things happen. It provides a consistent dev experience um, using a Node.js, Gulp, and all of that stuff. So using that industry standard tooling for web stack development. And we are hearing a lot of great feedback related on just React developers moving to Microsoft 365 and saying that, well, SharePoint Framework was the easiest way to actually to build the stuff in Microsoft 365. Because again, automatic hosting, automatic single sign-on, just web stack development in TypeScript. Well, that wasn't easy enough. Now, as already mentioned, SharePoint Framework actually provides and powers capabilities across multiple different services within Microsoft 365. So the naming is certainly a bit misleading. Uh, it started as a SharePoint Framework solution for SharePoint. Then it extended to be supported also in Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Teams was a supported option. Then it extended to Microsoft Viva and Microsoft Viva Connections and Viva Home. And we're looking into extending that to other Viva modules as well. No announcements at this video at least yet. Uh, and then uh, pretty recently as part of Ignite 2021 announcements, we actually announced SharePoint Framework to be available also for Outlook and Microsoft 365. 
Technically, this is really cool because now you can have a one component which you built, and then you can actually expose to exactly the same component in SharePoint, in Microsoft Teams, in Microsoft Viva, in Outlook, and in Microsoft 365 app. And in your code, you're able to say, okay, where am I being hosted? Oh, I'm actually being exposed in the Teams, so therefore I will a bit change my rendering logic if you want to, or you can render the exactly the same logic, and you'll have access on the service-specific APIs through that model. So really, really cool uh, and modern way of doing things. Content-driven applications, single sign-on, we talked about that one already, automatic hosting and industry standard tooling. So we mentioned already in the previous slide. Now, if we then think about what is the Viva extensibility, we mentioned the Viva connection, we mentioned Viva Home. And Viva Home is something new, which was announced again on uh, November 2021, or was it October? Anyway, in Ignite 2020. Two, no, 2022, not 2021, 2022, uh, in Ignite 2022. And so Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Viva Home will be the default starting point for Viva modules. So the intention here, which you're seeing on the left side of the screen, is that there's going to be a native mobile experience for first line workers. And you can easily access all of this information through your mobile device or your tablet device or if you are in a desktop experience you can actually access that same experiences within the desktop experience and you can see those individual cards and those are ace components so those are adaptive card components which can be created and customized and modified using sharepoint framework the right side of the picture is showing you viva connection which is something which was released 2021 november um, so you it basically provided a baseline for the Viva Home, and now you can actually combine all of this starting from 2023. And for the actual ACE creation, that's what Viva Connection Toolkit is all about. So how do we create those card, adaptive card components? How do we make them work? How do we, when we click a button, how do we hit a graph API on surface information? How do we hit a LOB APIs? Or how do we integrate even in on-premises directly from a mobile device um, to get access on information through Azure channels and all that stuff. So that's all possible with SharePoint Framework, uh, which is powering all of that access and hosting behind of the scenes. Now, why did we actually create the Viva Toolkit? Well, the, the point here was really to simplify the getting started. So there's a lot of new people and partners and, and uh, developers coming into the Viva Microsoft Viva world because Microsoft Viva is extensible. So we wanted to make sure that it's it's as simple as possible. And there's a lot of lot of visual uh, code extensions available. So we wanted to create an extension together with our community members to make it easier to get started on creating those Viva components. We wanted to have an automatic setup because quite often uh, the setup of the enterprise environment, uh, your development environment, is the hard thing. So making sure that all of the dependencies are in place, so you look, you can click a button and the button says, oh, you're missing this Node.js version, or you're missing this bucket, let me fix that for you. And then it will make everything uh, available for. And that's the environment verification. You can also start from a sample or a scenario, and those scenarios are actually even with the code tour. So if you start a, a, a your creation of a solution from a Microsoft Craft scenario, we will call out the different pieces of code, what you need to consider and what's happening where, and what you can change to make that ACE to work on potentially and against another ACE, uh, another, another Microsoft Craft API. So really the objective here was to simplify development, to make it easier uh, for the developers to build and create experiences for Microsoft Viva. Now, what does this actually contain? So what are we actually providing? There's some pictures on the right side, which are actually showing you some of the pictures and capabilities in place. Some of this we already mentioned, but really this is for pro code developer tooling to simplify development, validation, publishing of custom Microsoft Viva experiences uh, within your tenant or potentially also, why not, in the in the actual store in AppSource. So all of the, you can use the Viva toolkit to create your solutions and then expose them to be available through AppSource for all of the other customers uh, who are building or using Microsoft Viva experiences. We have quick start experiences, so making it super easy to get started on things. Uh, it builds and debug with ease, so there's an easy way of actually associating your development experience to a tenant so you can easily see and access your app catalog where the, where the deployments are happening you can click of a button you can actually deploy your solution to the tenant you can easily start debugging you can easily start testing things and of course behind of the scenes um, the sharepoint framework is providing the automatic hosting so there's no costs or 
uh, complexity or maintenance or operational challenges on hosting your code. Everything what you deploy as a SharePoint framework solution is hosted for free without, uh, without any complexity of operations and without complexity of getting that website in place in Azure on a customer tenant Azure. Um, maybe that works for some customers super easily, maybe for some it's much more complicated, but SPFX, you don't need to worry about it at all. Right now, uh, this, this solution is in a beta or previous status, uh, so we are collecting feedback. Uh, so if you have ideas how to improve that, we would love to get your feedback uh, around the Viva, Viva Toolkit uh, to understand well, how we can improve that even more. Now, if you are a developer who already is familiar with using uh, the SharePoint Framework Human Generator, why would you use this? Well, you don't have to. You can still continue using uh, SPFX Human Generator and CLI for Microsoft 365. So the toolkit is an overlay, an abstraction layer on top of those two tools. So there are no additional actually tricks or hidden capabilities or anything. Everything what you can you would do with SPFX and CLI for Microsoft 365 in command line is basically what the tooling is doing. So it's an abstraction layer. And, and again, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. If you're familiar with Yeoman Generator with SPFX, sure, you can use that as well. What we wanted to do here is really target the new and inexperienced developers who might not feel familiar with SPFX Yeoman Generator uh, to start using that. So what's available? Uh, there's a connection uh, or signing in against your developer tenant, so you can do easily operations directly in Visual Studio Code against the tenant, so you can deploy the solutions, you can uh, open up the tenant, you can open up the app catalog easily and access points. There's an environmental validation, which we talked about, installation of technical dependencies, solution updates with CLI for Microsoft 365. So if you're looking into, for example, updating from a previous version of SharePoint Framework, to a latest version of SharePoint framework, you can actually use the tooling for that as well. Again, behind of the scenes, it's using the CLI for Microsoft 365, and it will give you the insights on how do I upgrade the latest version. Uh, this tooling also works uh, in any SharePoint framework solution, so that those quick buttons and access points to against the tenant, they are actually available in any SharePoint framework solution, not only within the adaptive card uh, component solutions, because it is a SharePoint framework solution. It works in the same way for Microsoft Teams, for Microsoft Viva, Outlook, and SharePoint, and so on. Now, how would I actually get started on this? The VS Code extension is in the VS Code extension gallery. You can easily access that by HTTPS, AKMS, Viva Code. It is currently in preview. Hopefully, we'll get it in uh, production uh, as, as part of this testing sequence. Uh, so we're looking into getting your input from this. Is this valuable? What should you want us to update? And what are the things uh, you would like to see in general around the Viva Connection Toolkit development? Looking into getting that feedback directly in GitHub. So github.com slash pmp slash VS Code Viva. And we actually do welcome contributors. So if you are familiar about extension development for Visual Studio Code, we would love to get you involved uh, on, on potentially maintaining or adding new features directly into extension. Of course, the most important thing is the feedback. So please let us know what works and what does not actually work. Cool. So that's actually a quick intro on the Viva Connection uh, toolkit uh, for Visual Studio Code. Um, and hopefully you find the tool interesting, as mentioned so many times, the feedback, the feedback, the feedback. We're recording this video in January 2023, because you need to remember that it's right here. And we would love to get your feedback to understand, is this helpful? If you would like to have something useful, um, additional features on it, what else we would like to see, how we can make your life easier to build this experiences. So please let us know uh, through social media channels or Adding, uh, adding comments directly on the issue list on the project. Super, super valuable and looking forward to engagement. Thank you.